Good night, good night, good night. Happy Thursday. How we doing? How we doing? I'm just now trying to grab me a little pony. Got a little pineapple over here. How you ladies doing on today? Is that Sister Daphne? Sister Daphne, I didn't expect to see you today. Happy birthday. Again. Thank you for stopping by on your birthday. So happy that you're able to stop by for a little minute and tune in while you're out and about looking so cute. You, you should all should be able to um, unmute and so forth. I'm going to the store with my girls, but tuned in. Okay, awesome, awesome sauce. Awesome, awesome sauce. Um, I believe we have a, a, a really good session for us on tonight with some deep reflection and, and thinking and so forth. And so we're going to wait to 8.02 and then we'll go ahead and get started. But I hope everybody, for the most part, had a <laughs> had a good day on today. I laughed because baby, his homework it, it gives you all kind of patience. You you gotta you gotta work on. I'm like, did the teacher teach you today? <laughs> I'm like, I'm teaching. I'm teaching. I'm I'm teaching it. It's like it's too it's too much that you not understand. I'm teaching like. This ain't this ain't how it's supposed to take place. So I think I'm gonna actually reach out to his teacher and see um like what's taking place that when he comes home, like everything has to be like taught. And it's and it's doing and it's stuff like stuff that don't even make sense to me. You know, like I understand how to do it, but I'm like, why they gotta like today he was doing numbers called compensating, where you adding up um, if you had 39 and you want to go to 40, so you add one, but then later on you got to go back and subtract it. I'm like, all these extra steps, uh, just do the math, just stressing me out. <laughs> Let's pray. Anybody else want to open up and say how today is going so far? If not, we'll go ahead and get into prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the mighty name of Jesus, just telling you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for today. Thank you for an opportunity to be able to come here together um, with our sisters and talk about our purpose, the reasons for being here on the earth. God, I thank you that you've been putting this before me all week on today and just showing me different things. Lord, I pray that you just take over, Lord, that you just have your way, that you come inside of this meeting um, and that you touch each and every one of us inside of a special way to continue to help us to walk out um, the purpose that you have for each and every one of us. So Lord, I pray that you speak through the videos, that you speak through each sister, that you speak through myself, that Lord, you even speak in the silence as we um, go about this workshop on today, Lord. Help us to be able to just open up our spiritual eyes and to be able to see each and every one of our own different gifts, our talents, our purpose for being here, Lord. Open up our ears. We come up against the hand of the enemy that tries to do anything to distract us while inside of this meeting, to do anything to distract us and believing in our purpose and our gift. Any distractions at all, Lord, with those that are traveling. We pray for traveling mercies for them, Lord, that they're able to make it to their destination safely. We thank you, God, and we bless you for Sister Daphne. That is her birthday. She turned 25 today. <laughs> Lord, but we thank you and we bless you for Sister Daphne. May this year be the best year yet, Father God, that you just continue to bless her and shower down on her like only you can do, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 We sung happy birthday. The last workout. Sis trying to work. Yeah, I don't think I don't think she was she was she there? Because I feel like we only sung to Sister Ali. On the, um not this morning. On the last cardio at night, we have sung happy birthday. I feel like she came, maybe she came in a little bit later. Okay. And so I'm sorry, y'all. Let me eat this last pineapple in my mouth. Be with me. <laughs> okay. And so on today, it's going to be a little bit different. Like I said, um, God gave me the topic for us, which is working out our purpose. And I can't even remember like what really pressed it upon me. Um, 
last week to start talking about purpose and so forth. Um, but I really think it stems from a lot of people just not being 100% certain of their purpose and of their calling. And it's so important because if we find, if when we find ourselves, okay, no problem. If we find ourselves, um, just doing our nine to five or just raising the family and we don't feel as if we got our actual we're walking in our purpose sometimes we can be doing so much but still feel unfulfilled and it's important as well as god got us all here for a specific reason and we can be doing so many other things but if we're not walking in our purpose we can miss our marker and so God has just been showing me different videos that I've been watching over this last week and I'm like oh this one talks about when I'm not even expecting it to hit on purpose, you know, and it's like, oh, here we go again. Oh, here we go again. So that's what we're going to do today. I have a collection of different videos. I'm not going to play the entire video. I will um, come back and share the video clips. And so if you ladies want to go back and watch the full sermons in your time, you can. But I just want us to, um, we can open up and speak some, but I would like a lot of self-reflection to take place as we listen to the different things um, and see how it resonates with each and every one of our spirits. Okay. Now, I done put these videos where they supposed to be in the right place and set the time up right. So y'all stand in agreement with me that... Um, this stuff do what it's supposed to do. That it don't jump over nowhere. Do nothing silly. I right, look at that. <laughs> All right, so we're going here first. We're going to turn the volume up. It's up already. We're going to make it bigger. We're going to hit play, and I pray you can hear. Only a couple minutes out of here. Well, today we'll watch the football game from a TV in the kitchen. Because the only reason you have a TV in the kitchen is to be able to glance at it while you do other things. Most will watch the game from the den or the TV room, the media room, because they want everything else to be a, a addendum to the reason why they were there. A TV in the kitchen, you glance at because you got other reasons to be there to eat, to cook, to do other things. But once you sit in that den, in the chair, you want everything else to facilitate that. God has too many of his people in the kitchen and not enough of his people in the den. Where God is good while I do other things. But he's not the centerpiece and other things have to plug into that. And when you miss that, you miss the kingdom. You miss the centrality, the purpose, the goal of our created reason for being. If cars on a train are not linked in to the engine, those cars aren't going anywhere, even though they may contain valuable things. By your creation, you contain valuable things. But if you're not hooked into the engine, you're not going anywhere. That is, you're not arriving at your creator's intended destination. So what the enemy is seeking to do is to steer us away from this kingdom purpose. And what you need to know about your kingdom purpose is that uh, uh, you are custom made. You're not off the rack. And the proof of that is your own fingerprints. No two fingerprints are alike because you weren't supposed to be like anybody else. You have been uniquely created, uniquely crafted, uniquely called, uniquely gifted for a kingdom assignment. And if you're not kingdom minded and kingdom oriented, you will miss your kingdom assignment and wind up uh, settling for a career while losing a life. Because that's what many people do. They live for the career and never arrive at the life because it never got plugged in, connected to this unshakable kingdom. So the kingdom is the jurisdiction, it's the rule, it's the realm of God. And he claims a monopoly on his creation. He says, you were created to fulfill a piece of the puzzle to the bigger picture. Or as Ephesians 2.10 says, 
We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he hath created beforehand that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works that we should walk, that we should walk in, that he himself has created. No appliance decides what it wants to be. No appliance. The stove doesn't decide I'm going to cook. The refrigerator doesn't decide I'm going to cool. The manufacturer decides who's going to do what. Who's going to cook? Who's going to be a toaster? Who's going to be a can opener? Who's going to be a stove? That's not decided by the appliance. That's decided by the creator. The moment the stove decides I'm a cool and the refrigerator decides I'm a cook, they are living outside of their created purpose. And if they're living outside of their created purpose, nothing going to work out right because they're not doing what they were made to do. God has a purpose, but to discover it, to live it out, you must be kingdom minded. That is, you must have a mindset of the rule of God operating in all of life. That's why 1 Corinthians uh, 1031, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. He does not even want you eating and leaving him out. Amen. Whether you eat or drink, he wants it down to the most regular, normal things that you do to be plugged into him. The moment you unplug it, you lose the power that's supposed to go through it. Okay? So he said a, a lot of great things there. Um, and so... I'm scared to touch too many things because I got so many things open. And so he said a, a lot of great things there. One of the um one of the, the main things that to pull from his is we want to be kingdom minded. We want to be kingdom centered. We wanna and listen, if we're if if I'm being honest, sometimes I can I I pray this don't close y'all out. Can y'all still hear me and so forth? Because it's saying it it's frozen. All right. Um, and so we want to be kingdom centered. If I'm 100% honest, sometimes it can be the opposite way around, right? Like, oh, we got our family that we're taking care of. We got even the church that we're taking care of and we hitting this button, hitting that button. We got the job that we're taking care of and then I'm going to fit God in when I can, you know? Um, I might do a quick devotional in the morning, or I might do a quick prayer before I eat, or I might, you know, read my Bible a little bit at night. But have I really tapped into God? Have we really tapped into God to see what's his plan? He's our creator. And like how um, Pastor Tony Evans said, is that we can have everything in us, just like those carts. But if it's not connected to the engine, it's either not going anywhere or it's not going in the right direction. And so this thing is, okay, if it closed, everybody come right back, please. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so I'm gonna back up a little bit. Um, this thing is acting. When I tell you all kind of funny, I'm a, I can hear Miss Joy saying, "Uh, uh, devil." He, cause he know this is what we need to hear. That's why he acting up. Okay, but I want to back up a little bit and I want to go over a few scriptures for us to have on today because um, our biblical understanding it aligns with faith. If our faith is low when it comes to this, understanding our purpose will fall off when it comes to understanding our purpose. And let's let's go over it. So one of the first scriptures is um, Jeremiah 29, 11. If we can have some readers, that'd be great. Jeremiah 29 and 11, and then Romans 8 and 28. Jeremiah. 29, 11. If you're able to read, you can just um, do the hand. You actually, you're able to unmute yourself. 
Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Sorry, was somebody going to read it? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. And so we have to truly believe in our heart that that scripture right there is true, that God says in his word, which does not lie, that he has plans for us and that he knows the plans for us and his plans to prosper us and plans not to hurt us. And so we have to believe that wholeheartedly in our heart. And so that's saying no matter what is looking like in front of me, this is what I believe. Okay, and then next we're going to go to Romans 8 and 28. And it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So again, going back to that, that everything, every situation, no matter what it looks like, God is taking that thing and turning it around and working it for our good. Um the next thing so remembering that god is so the most important thing if you want to take notes is remember that god has a plan and he has a plan for each and every one of us it's not only the pastors it's not only the children or the babies it's not only the people that got it right like he has a plan for each and every one of us um and then two remembering going back to genesis 1 and 27 if somebody can read that genesis 1 and 27 that we have an identity in christ genesis 1 and 27 okay genesis 1 and 27 yes please um, NIV, it says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Amen. Thank you. So he, God created each and every one of us inside of his own image. And so knowing that I am who I am with all of my uh, perfections and all of my flaws that God in intentionally created me and he created me inside of his image and this is how I in identify I identify as uh, for the lack of better words a creature a creature of God amen a being a being of God and so next is first Corinthians 12 we won't read the whole thing but it talks about our spiritual gifts and callings letting us know that the Bible says that each and every person just like that truck there from Pastor Tony Evans we all have gifts we all have callings that's on the inside of us and so it's not just particular people but we all have it and so we all have to believe it now, even if we haven't quite figured it out, which by hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have a better uh, understanding of our gifts and our talents and our callings and so forth. Um, but knowing that we all have this, it's not only certain certain people that have this. Um, number four, keep it in mind that we're living for a greater cause, that it's not about us that this whole thing that we're doing is not about us and that's going to take us um it's it's kind of like what pastor tony evans said it's like a puzzle it's a puzzle piece and we're all each of us sister michelle sister tc we're all puzzles inside of this puzzle piece but by without each piece is incomplete you may not even you sometime have you ever picked up a puzzle and you see about 10 pieces and you have no clue what it is that this puzzle is going to be at the end but when you put it all together when each piece holds its own space it makes everything complete and so it's the same thing for us it that's why it's important for each and every one of us to show up within our christian walk because we all hold a puzzle piece to god's plan all right, so I'm going to go to our next video, which is very short. And this is by one of, I, I like this pastor a lot, Pastor um, Robert Badu. If you know him, drop a one in the comments. Uh, Social Dallas. <sighs> a gift! On the inside of me you know what I love about the illustration you know what I love about that is none of you knew that was in there except for me <laughs> you know why 
because I'm the one that put it in there. See, that's why I get excited when haters and naysayers come in my life and they say things like, well, I don't see you doing that. No, I don't see that happening in your life. Of course you don't see it. You didn't put anything in me. But there is a God that put something down on the inside of me. Oh, and as soon as I stir it up, you're going to see things that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has put on the inside of me. Come on, if you know something's in you, would you give God 10 seconds of your best praise yes, in Lord, this place you, tonight? Lord. Hallelujah! On the inside of me. Stir it up. On the inside of stir it up. One of us. Stir it up. This year, stir it up. Yes, every dream, every gift, yes, every purpose, stir it up. There's a gift. There is a gift. Down on the inside of you. I don't care if you can't see it. You can't see it because you haven't stirred it. Stir it up. You got something God has given you to do something he has uniquely called and created you to do. And until you stir it up, you'll never see it. There is a gift in you. Can I tell you, just as sure as I'm holding this gift in my hand, every single person in this room, every single person, person in this sanctuary every single person in this sanctuary has a gift Amen. not a single person has a gift ever something god has given you and i wonder have you figured it out yet what is your gift this is the greatest day of your life the day you realize what god has put on the inside of you this is your real birthday right here the day you realize what he put in you in fact there's an old african proverb that says there's two important days in your life not the day you're born and the day you die, but rather the day you're born and the day you find out why you were born. What is your gift? You have something God has given you to do what he's called you to do. And I wonder, have you figured it out yet? Come on, I can spend all night tonight talking about the gifts that are in this room. We got gifted business leaders in here. We got gifted teachers and doctors and lawyers and construction workers and artists. All kinds of gifts in this room. There are gifts that made this night possible. Come on, how many are thankful for your worship team? Come on, that just led us into the presence of God. That is their gift. And I believe even some greater singers are sitting right out there and you've never taken a step to stir up your gift and sing and put the song that God put in you. Just some of you now, some of you, not everybody. <laughs> Amen. Not everybody. It's not your gift. You need to lip sync for Jesus. But, but you got something. <laughs> you got something. It might not be to be able to sing, but you have a gift. Some people, your personality is a gift. Just your personality. You ever meet somebody that come around and you're like, oh, I don't know what it is about Fred. But I feel better when Fred comes along. That is a gift. You've got something. I'm going to stay right here until this message hits you right in the face. Do you know what your gift is? Have you figured it out? Come on, some of you, your gift could just be your smile. Come on, that is a gift. Come on, you don't see what I see from this stage. I preach in churches all the time, and there's some people whose face do not look like they love Jesus. I think churches would grow exponentially if some people would just smile when they come in the sanctuary. Instead of looking like you constipated and been sucking on lemons all day, just smile. That is a gift. That is a gift. What? is your gift this is your year to identify your gift and use it in the kingdom of god see, see, let, me, let me explain oh, i feel like preaching tonight here's why here's why so many people don't think they have a gift here's why many people that don't think they have a gift part of the problem forgive us is on the church because the church does a great job watch this at highlighting stage gifts stage gifts stage gifts we have people sitting out there going well huh, I can't preach like Pastor Gary. I can't sing like that. So maybe I don't have anything to offer. Have you lost your mind? It is your gift in the marketplace, your gift and your unique calling that I believe God wants to use in these last days to bring in the revival that we've been waiting for. Come on, the preacher you've been waiting for is you. You're going to preach the best sermon with your life and you got to find out what your gift is. What is your gift? Okay, I told you I was giving you some application tonight. I'm going to help those of you who, who love notes, okay? Now, I'm going to give you... What is your gift? What is your gift? Each and every one of us have a gift. I want us to take the next 90 seconds or so and just really think and really reflect. And if you feel as if like, 
I know my gifts and I know my calling. Great, 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 great. Let's further take that. Let's think about it, you know, even more like, am I operating 100% in my gift? Did I use my gift today? You know, when's the last time that I use my gift? I know what my gift is. Did I use it? And if you feel like I'm not sure what my gift is, what my calling is, those different things that he talked about, like what is something that that just bubbles your heart? you feel good when you do this thing what is something that everybody is like girl you're so good at that and you're like "Eh," you know or or we'll see it in another video i don't know if it'll talk about that part like maybe what is something that he talked about it so i'll talk about it what is something that bothers you you know maybe you go inside of um (laughs) i'm a very punctual person and so being late bothers me like bothers me okay and so that could be a calling of mine you know speaking to other people about you know promptness and being on time or or maybe within i don't know somehow you know god could use it you know or maybe you go into church and you like hmm if they would have moved this right here and put this light in right here or just did this it would have made a whole different things in the atmosphere he talked about like that's not your reason to leave the church that's your reason to use your calling your gift something that you notice that other didn't notice and work that thing so i'm gonna be quiet and for the next 60 seconds um let's just think about it So, so Pamela, you said you couldn't hear anything. I pray you heard that video, right? Okay, yeah. Because I know I've seen Sister Michelle praising. So I'm like, I, I'm like, I thought I heard it. Okay, so I'm going to the next one now. And these are all people that I listen to somewhat on a regular basis, more so listening to my bishop because he is under my cover. And you love him, Michelle, I saw that. <laughs> Not at your graduation. You're, you're excited for this next season. You're excited to have a baby, but you're grieving that the baby daddy isn't present. You're, you're excited to have this promotion, but you're, you're grieving what it actually took to get it and who you mm-hmm. lost in the process mm-hmm. of the next season. And this is David. He has this uh, dichotomy, if you will, this, this, uh, his life is such a contrast. It's like, it's like, as soon as something good happens, something bad happens. Mm-hmm. As soon as something bad happens, something good happens. And how do I celebrate when I'm, and when I'm in the middle of a miracle and a tragedy? Woo. And David has a balance of tension. I think it's very important for us to understand the context of David. Because all of this contributes now to his Mm self-talk. That he didn't just see this unusually beautiful woman Mm -hmm. when he was on a roof. Something led to it. The Bible says he woke up from his midday nap, nap, his rest. And there's something that's happening in his brain. There's something that's firing or misfiring, perhaps, that leads him to walking on the roof. I love the setup. I love this idea of being able to see ourselves in David's story and how many times we've been so frustrated as to like, God, why am I restless? Why am I in this battle with myself? I 
outwardly everybody's celebrating me, but inwardly there's this frustration. Yeah. How do I? How did I end up out of position? How did I end up here, God? I never expected to find myself here. As the Bible talks about David walking on this rooftop, there's this Hebrew term that is used for this walking that actually dictates this idea of him pacing back and forth, this restlessness that's going on as he's woke up from this midday nap and he finds himself on the rooftop. And what I really believe that this conversation is supposed to do for us is to give us language that was, as we process through David's story, to find these four reasons that it's so important that we do this internal work. There's, there's a necessity for us to kind of process through this pacing, this internal war that's going on on the inside of us to recognize how we end up where we are. Because this is where we find David on the rooftop when he's supposed to be at war. Normally at the time, kings are out for battle. And I think one of the first things that we see is this question and this understanding of if he's not at war and he's now on the rooftop battling, we can start to look at how our actual call is not just about our assignment, but it's also protection for us. Mm. And I don't know if we always think about that. I know like I'm called and I'm anointed and appointed by God is something that we often say, but could it be that the David that was a warrior for everybody else was also being warred for by God and being protected by God by being called to war? Mm. Because had he been on the battlefield, he would have never been on the rooftop. He would have never been on the rooftop to see something that he should have never seen, which would have caused him to do something that he should have never done as a result of being in position to the call that God had on his life. So I'm saying that maybe God's call to you for the classroom is not just because you're supposed to be this assignment for the student, but maybe it's calling you to a place where you'll be protected from being idle and being in a position to say something or see something or do something that you're never right. called to see that will be protection for you too. It's God warring for you as a result of the call that he's place um, as a buffer around you. I want us to co consider the different things that God has called us to that sometimes kept us. Because I cannot say this, many times we've over-assumed our strength but simply based on the obedience that was attached to the assignment that God has called us to. Mm. I want to make this more clear. Many times we've assumed that we're stronger and that we didn't fall into adultery or we didn't fall into that trap because we got enough self-strength. Maybe it was simply just that I obeyed the will of God and it kept me from the thing that I, yeah. I would have never seen as a result of the obedience. I think that we've given ourselves sometimes too much credit when really it was just God's protection by way of obedience where we followed his step and he kept us from things dangerous, seen and unseen that we should have never actually went toward. And so I really wanted to just offer as we are navigating this conversation that you really do need to pay attention to the call of God that's on your life more to do with not just the assignment, but to do with the call of protection for your life. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, pr we want to give you five, five takeaways. Um, uh and again, I'll share the links and we're all able to go back and, and watch them on your own and get their different takeaways and so forth. But this was really, really powerful. Really, really powerful. I've said it, but never really processed this before myself. I'll give an opportunity to open up and then I'll give my little two cents before we do our last video today. If you have anything um, that stood out to you from that last video from the videos before or so feel free to um unmute yourself and chime in i do i have something to say what i like about the um well first thing first with the um with minister green what what i love about that i never looked at it that way either you know, oh, I, I love God or I like to do this or I like to do that. I didn't realize that what I was doing is not only for that person, but it was also for me. Now, I do understand when we say forgiveness is not for you, it's for the other. It's not for the other person It's for you. Now, I understand that, but I never took that as this type of concept as far as a spiritual gift. I didn't realize that. And I was like, wait, what? So, you know, that kind of like gave me a, a, a aha type moment. And then for the minister before who was talking about the gift, a lot of times I used to do that too. I can't do that like that person. And I can't do that like that person. And I will compare myself, but it don't cause me to fail not to do what God's work. It just caused me to, okay, I have to figure out, stay in my own lane and recognize that, okay, Pam, you're not like her. You're like you. And you have to make sure you you. So that's the fight that I used to have against myself trying to figure out, well, okay, well, who am I? So I won't say I'm like her. 
or like Clarissa on my ship so I can say that. So I like that. I like that how he had the gifts. What I was hoping that he would do, he would open the box. He did at one point. Oh, he did? Okay, <laughs> okay. That's what I was looking for. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, that's my take on those two videos. And I'm sorry for being late and I missed the first one. So I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> uh, Thank you for sharing. Anybody else want to add anything to that? Go ahead. Let me help. China. Okay. So I, I know there's a test that you could take to find your like your gifts. I wish I could find it again because I feel like what used to be my gift is not my same gift. Mm -hmm. So like I, I missed part of the the first video. So well probably part of a lot of it. But when he was talking about gifts, that was something that has been like on my mind, on my heart for a while. And I was like, okay, Lord, I hear you talking. Just keep, t I guess I wasn't listening good, tapping me on my head. And I was like, I need to reassess. I think what has been, was my gift, maybe it's not my gift anymore. Okay. It, we, it definitely can grow and develop and change and uh, change. You know, I was trying to think like how to catapult it caterpillar metamorphs into something totally different um mama joyce deaconess mama joyce normally does these for us on gifts and talents and so she didn't give us a survey a couple of times i'll dig through my email and i'll get it in and add it to one of the emails that we send out uh, i can't find it but if i cannot find it i'm sure she has it and so i will make sure that you get that uh, but yes piggybacking on some of you know what both of you said for me the the biggest takeaway if i've i've said it as far as uh I, I feel as if i have a few different gifts and talents right um that's like calling not just things that i'm good at um one of them being i feel as if my purpose is here doing fab and growing fab and so forth and i've said it so many times that this is a complete circle I've said it so many times that if it wasn't for us, I believe I would have gained all my weight back and I wouldn't have even got down as far as I did. I've said that so many times, but not really letting it really sink in to exactly what it means that that that's even more reason why you have to continue to fight. You know, yes, you because when you're helping other people and so forth and you get burnt out, sometimes you can walk away because you're saying you're helping other people. But tend, you tend to when you get, well, let's say for our family, because sometimes we burnt out and we don't put ourselves first. Right. But when you know, because the Bible says all things work for our good. And so when you understand that, wait a minute, this thing that I'm doing, yes, I'm doing it for the kingdom, but it's actually a blessing for me, you know, as well. Then it's like, oh. Maybe I should keep going, you know, a little bit harder because I have thought about it. Rissa, if you stopped, what would happen to your journey? Would you still, you know, be going to the gym? Would you let weeks and months go by and you're not worried about your eating? Like, this is my accountability. Like, I don't just say it because it sounds good. Like, this is what I, I feel in my heart. And her saying that backed up exactly what I'm saying, what I, I mean in that aspect. I also believe that I'm called to talk. You know, when I talk and I motivate and encourage people, it's like you're feeding into them. But what I get back from that, um, and it's not a, like pride or anything, but just a sense of feeling fulfilled. And so that's what we opened up today talking about that um, some of us can be just spinning a wheel doing so much different stuff and not feeling fulfilled. Like you can have the most bank of money in a bank account, but still not feel fulfilled. And we got want all of us to, to live out our calling, you know, to feel fulfilled and, and to understand that we are pieces of this puzzle. And that um, if we don't flip over our puzzle piece, something is missing. You know, what are we missing out to help somebody else? But as we're learning now to help ourselves, to help the next generation within our family and so forth, you know, what is it? Again, you know, asking us, even those that know our calling, did you apply it today? Did I apply it today? You know, did I, the, the trains, um, Pastor Tony Evans talked about the train, is it connected to the engine? Or did we just get up and like, oh, got to get the kids together, got to get to work, got to do, got to do, got to do, got to do. Oh, yeah, God love you, you know, or did we really sit in and say, God, there was a specific purpose for September the 19th, you know, 
I'll share one more quick thing and then we'll go to the next thing. And I'm, I'm probably going to do a live on it. Um, I'll do a live on it. I'm going to hold us up here. I'll do a live on it after this. And those that are available can hop on. Let me show our last video. It's a little, a little bit longer than the others. Jesus, our new covenant, calls 12 disciples together. I'm going to give you insight, he says to the disciples, on what God is doing in the earth. Because when you're in covenant with God, you get information first that other people can't even understand. I can tell you was off, God just dropped it in my spirit. I'm in covenant with God. You ain't lived until God dropped something in your spirit. That's how you know. Oh. He says to the disciples, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Okay, that's a new pattern. That's a new pattern. This new covenant lays out a new pattern that everyone is to follow from this day forward. If you believe in me, this is your pattern. Follow me We're not gonna watch and I will thing. make you fishers of men. Step one in the pattern, follow me. Follow me. Just follow me. Just be in the atmosphere where I am. Inconvenience yourself to be where I am. Be willing to leave your familiar to be where I am. Be willing to break out of your cycle to be where I am. I'm telling you, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. And some people, they did, they followed him. But then there's this next step of the pattern where he says, and I will make you. Uh-oh. Can I tell you a secret? Some people come to church and they follow them. But people who are in relationship don't just follow. They let Jesus make them. If you could have seen the person you sit next to <laughs> before you were sitting next to him, you would know that he's a miracle working God. I didn't just get he made me into this. Baby, there was a time I would have cussed you and slapped you, but he made me into this. There was a time when I would have lost my mind, but he made me into this. I didn't just follow him so that I could say I'm a cute little Christian. I allowed him to make me. I don't think the same way. I don't speak the same way because I allowed him to make me. Jesus says, I'm going to make you into something. If you follow me and you don't change, you didn't follow me. Because if you follow me, you should have no choice but to be made into something else. If you follow me, I'm going to make you. I know I called you an author and you have no idea what an author is. But if you follow me, I will make you into what I called you to do. If you follow me, I will make you into the rooms I'm calling you to go into. If you follow me, I will make you and to the husband you never thought you could be. If you follow me, I will make you into a person of integrity. If you follow me, I will make you walk with boldness. If you follow me, I will show you how to humble yourself. If you follow me, I will give you the language you need. If you follow me, that trauma won't rule you. If you follow me, I will make you. I'll do surgery on the inside. You go from being a woman with the issue of blood to a woman and I call daughter. How could it be in the same text that I started off with issues and ended in adoption? He must have a pattern where he announces that I am whole and all of a sudden I'm whole again. I think I messed around and I let him make me. I wasn't a preacher when I was growing up here, but I started following God and he made me into what he called me for. I want to talk to somebody who is being made into 
into something new right now. I want you to know that if you get on the potter's wheel and don't mess around and get in the potter's house, I'll make sure that you are transformed. I'll make sure that you turn into a vessel that doesn't look like what they went through. If you follow me, I will. I'll make you. Oh, God. Okay. I just... Y'all know what I love about him? Is that the following and the making is not a one-time thing. Cause sometimes I follow him and he makes me on the level that I am. But then he calls me somewhere else and I got to follow him somewhere I've never been before and he says follow me and I'll make you again follow me and we'll go from glory to glory to glory just keep following and I'm gonna keep making if you keep following I'm gonna keep making if you keep following even in your latter years I'll still be making you even in your former years I'll still be making you I don't God 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 at my big age you would cause me to do something new. God, I don't know if I can survive in that new arena. I don't know if I can survive in that new industry. God, you would call me, follow me, and I'll make you. I'll show you. I'll show you how to quit. I'll show you how to build. I'll show you how to let go. I'll make you the person who doesn't even need that anymore. Follow me and I will make you, I'll make you into it. Holy and acceptable, I'll make you into it. Follow me, I don't just call the shots. I get in the ring with you. I'll make you into that man. I'll make you into that woman. I'll make you into that bit. I'll make you into it. <laughs> that word, thank you, Jesus. That word make, in the Greek, it means product. Follow me, and you will be my product. <laughs> You'll be my product. You'll be my brand. You'll be the collective essence of my expression. I will make you my product. And I know that he does this because in Acts 4, when the disciples are speaking in the synagogues, they perceive that they were uneducated and untrained men. And they marveled because they realized they had been with Jesus. Untrained, uneducated, but the product of Jesus, it was so evident 
that they had been with Jesus because they looked like a product of his. I want to be a product of Jesus. Lord, I've been a product of my environment. I've been a product of my trauma. I've been a product of my success. I've been a product of my hustle. I've been a product of the culture. I've been a product of everything else. I want to be a product of Jesus. I want people to marvel when they look at me because they see you shining through me. I want them to say she was untrained. She was uneducated. She didn't know what she was talking about, but I'm still marveling at her because for some kind of way, it looks like he speaks through her. To be a product of Jesus is not just to speak or preach or worship. You are the difference on your workspace. You are the difference in your family. You are the difference in all of the storytellers that are creating films and television shows you when you are a product of Jesus, it shows up in what God has gifted you to do. This is my product, but what is yours? How are you different than the culture, the environment, the paradigms of your family, your community? Are you a product of Jesus? Have you been made new? When I enter this text in Matthew 10, verse 16, I really wrestled with this because I saw the pattern, follow me and I will make you. But there was this hidden next step. And this is what I think I wrestled with in trying to study. And I think this is where many of us get stuck. Is some of us do the following. And some of us do the making. But in Matthew 10, we see the third part of this pattern is follow me. I will make you. And then I will send you. God help me. Follow me. I will make you. And then I will send you. I am not making you to keep you. I'm making you to send you. Who that's the kingdom. And some of us we come to church. And we follow him and we've been made new, but we don't allow ourselves to be sent. In the kingdom of heaven, which is different than church, is about how we invade what happens outside of this room. It is how we take the kingdoms of this world and make them the kingdom of our Lord. It's when the ideas and the creativity that God has placed on the inside of us doesn't stay with us. He tells these disciples, I'm sending you. And you are stepping into what you were made for. I don't know who's in this room. But I want you to understand that maybe you're like the disciples. And this is the part that I feel is so prophetic. And maybe it's just my own mail and I'm letting you read my mail. Some of us are about to step into what we have been made for. Amen. No, I want you to take 10 seconds. We worship God. Because I want you to be a product of your worship, not a product of your fear, 
I want you to be a product of the environment that has been making you and shaping you because I want you to understand that the kingdom does suffer the violence and the violence take it by force that there's somebody in this room and I hear God saying that it's kingdom season I hear God saying that it is time for you to go into territories bearing the mark of what you have been made for. Oh. Amen. The only thing that Jesus preaches. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Such a good, good word. All of those put together. If anybody want to unmute and you want to share um, what stood out to you, what you received from that or any other video, if you didn't get an opportunity to talk on the other ones, um, we have a couple of minutes left and, and we can share. Amen. How are we? I see you nodding, Sister Pamela. Go ahead. I was just reading uh reading my notes. And I and I'm not saying that I, I didn't know this, but the way she put it, so you you literally, if you literally follow Jesus. He going to make you whole again and make you into what he created you to be. Mm -hmm. Then he going uh, to send you out there to do what he created you to do because he made you. Right. And then you're going to step into another blessing after you did with, after you followed him and he made you and he sent you out to do. Mm -hmm. I'm all for it. All for it, right? <laughs> It, it goes right down the line as well as what Sister Kyra was saying, that she feels as if she's in a place of transition, you know, mm -hmm. the glory. Amen. Amen. I see you put your um, camera. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, when, I don't know, through it all, I was going to say when Sister Kyra was talking, but it, every everybody in the, the movie um, as well, um, it's like, it's so simple as we are continuously on the potter's wheel. Mm -hmm. I mean, like we we don't get off, you know, sometimes we get to that point, well, you know, we we made it, you know, but we didn't make it. We still own the potter's potter's wheel. And we don't know if the gift that we, and I'm saying gift, not gifts with an S. If the mm -hmm. gift that we have been given, that God has bestowed on us, if that particular gift is with us for a short season or a long season, wow. there's nothing in the Bible that says that you're going to have a gift and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could just be a gift that you have with your family being able to remain calm and keep everybody else calm, your demeanor. You know, it could just be that particular gift and then when you move to another job and God, God has placed you somewhere else, then this other gift comes up to surface and you're able to help people then and show God in you with that new gift that just surfaced. Mm -hmm. But we have to stay on that wheel. Or as the movie said, continue to follow. <laughs> What I get from what you said is like, don't even take your gifts for granted, you know? Sometimes mm -hmm. we have different gifts that, that we're sitting on. And like you said, we just assume that we're gonna have this gift for our entire life. And this is what we're gonna operate in our entire life, you know? Um, and this gift may be this gift for this season. And what are we supposed to do inside of this season? That just preached to me, whether you know it or not. Because, you know, like I said, I'm trying to get my speaking off and running and so forth. And that's assuming that I'm going to always be able to be a speaker, you know. And so use use it. Use it now in, in this moment. 
That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Anybody else want to add anything before we close out? So, Sakara, did you, did you receive that? I feel like that was um, confirmation for exactly what it is that you were saying, that our, our gifts, they change, and, and we're moving on. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so we have, if you're on mute and you can, are you trying to? Are you trying to unmute or just agree? Okay. No, I'm good. Thank you. I was just saying I, I agree. Okay. So we have a little homework before we head out. Um, list, list your gifts and your passions. And, you know, just look and see where are, where is each and every one of us, because it sounds like I'm saying y'all, but us, what, where are we at as far as developing it? Oh, let me take that away. Because as Pat just told us, and the Bible says this, but she brought it back to our remembrance, it's not even on us to develop this gift. This is a gift that God gave us. It's to us to seek him. Lord, what steps do I take? What persons to connect to? What books to read? What to do? Because sometimes, and Pastor Travis talked about it in the beginning of his video, uh, we can put so much pressure on ourselves that if I don't come through, this whole thing gonna fall apart. And it got like, really? You think I need this to take place? And you really think your little self is what's holding this all together? You know? And so, but for a person that can feel can feel overwhelmed sometime hopefully that's a piece of relief as well as to know wait a minute you mean to tell me that really the gifts and the talents i got the things that i am working on the way i'm able to have my family structured and the kids doing homework and this is this and this is that it ain't because i'm the a plus parent of the world you know it, it got a little anointing on that too you know but in that same hand instead of it coming out in a pride way it can you can come off and say okay i'm worried about my man being strong god fearing black men maybe all that ain't on to me maybe i just need to do what i need to do today make sure they make it into the house of the lord they go to church that they see mama praying and and reading her bibles and it ain't just a sunday relationship you know maybe if i keep up with these different things every day and then god put his anointing on it it's gonna happen but it's not on me to see this out to happen and so it's a sense of relief amen and so for all of us to write down what are our gifts what are our gifts what are our passions are you using it um, to its capacity? You know, are you following? Are we tapping into God? You know, in in using it in the capacity that we're supposed to use it on today, and and not take it as Sister Hazel, uh, Minister Hazel reminded us not to take it for granted as well, because they can come, they can come and go. I'm waiting on that voice. <laughs> Wait on my boys to come on through. So that's an example right there. He changed him. He changed him. Amen. All right, let's pray. We're going to pray up out here. And that's it for tonight. I pray that everybody received something on tonight for your spirit. Father God, we tell you thank you, Lord. Thank you for being an awesome God. Like, God, thank you for being a structured God. Thank you for being a God that... Uh, no perspective god that you love each and every one of your children father god that you give each and every one of us gifts and talents lord lord allow us to be able to just tap into you to be able to see these talents and see these gifts manifest god help us to be our puzzle pieces that you called out and set for us to be lord open up our eyes and let us to see and remember is that you said all things work for our good and so even as you call us to to be a call calling for someone else, a calling in our neighborhoods, a calling in our families, that is even for our own particular good as well, God. God, you're such an awesome God that you leave no stone unturned, God. God, we just ask that you speak to each and every one of our children, that you speak to each and every one of our grandchildren, God, that they're able to know their purpose and their passions, Father God, their gifts, God, that you speak to each and every one of us and that you continue to help us to be able to grow those things. God, we come up against the hand of the enemy when it comes to distractions. 
when it comes up to distractions, taking our time away, taking our mind away, idle hands, Father God. God, you also taught us in today that self-talk is important. As David did, he was having self-talk, which called, called him to be out of his place. And with him being out of his place, he wasn't on the battlefield. And instead, he was on top of the mountain, seeing things that he shouldn't have seen, which caused him to fall into temptation, Father God. So God, we just ask that you guard our self-talk that we only speak what you see in us father god um that we only see ourselves how you see us father god and that you just step in and intervene god let us to to see us how you see us god let us to speak let us to remember that one of our number one communicators is ourself and what we say or don't say because we're reacting a certain way is important even when it comes to our calling and walking on our calling god at the end of the day let us have no stress and no worries because you said you take everything, God, and you turn it for our good. Father God, you said that when we are weak, that you are strong, Father God. So even as some of us is trying to find out our calling, trying to find out our new calling, trying to develop our calling, let us just remember to tap into you, God, and to remember that you are the one that we're connected to and you're going to see that thing through as long as we stay connected into you, God. And so God, help us to be obedient as you call us to walk up about these walks father god help us you know continue to give us our yes and to not not be in fear not be in fear and to understand that you're all in control no matter what the situation in front of us looks that you're in control that you're in control we thank you and we love you in jesus mighty name we pray Amen, amen, amen. Shalom, shalom. Um, I love you all so much. Just this was, um, it was very insightful for myself. I pray that it was insightful for you ladies as well. Let's continue to keep each other accountable. You know, um, and accountable, it doesn't necessarily even have to be you like Kyra. Did you find it out? You know, it doesn't even have to be that. It could be just a matter of you sharing inside of the app. You know, hey, y'all, uh, you know, um, I'm doing X, Y, Z. This is something I think God called me to do. And it's like, oh, Sister Pamela been on it. She been doing so good with, you know, her calling for speaking to the young people, you know. And I admire that. You know what? I'm going to go do something too, you know. <laughs> you said speaking there, huh, Sister Pamela? <laughs> Yeah, and so, but but share share that as well. Like how they say, um, and I'm then we're gonna get up off of here. That sometimes simple as simple as our smile at work, we may not think that that's a gift. You know, that's a gift. Brighten up other people' day and so forth. I'm gonna go live on what happened on to be on today as soon as we hang up. So if you get a chance, uh, catch me on my Facebook. Um, it was pretty interesting. All right, love you all so much. Love you all so much. See how I left y'all hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, ladies. Y'all have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Love you, ladies. Love you, boy. All right. All right. Bye bye. Later.